Last weekend, SpaceX completed a static fire test of Super Heavy Booster 9 with all engines fired, producing approximately 7.9 million pound force of thrust, or around 3,600 metric tons. This means around 50% throttle. For the Starship orbital flight, Elon Musk declared that the real launch attempt will be at around 90%. This means that although the new water deluge systems worked well in the latest static fire test, it is not certain that it'll be enough to protect the launch pad in the next launch. Indeed, SpaceX is still continuing to perfect its giant water deluge system. In the days following the static fire test, we see workers tending to the concrete area encircling the flame deflector plate beneath the OLM. This attention to detail could potentially stem from minor concerns that surfaced about the flame deflector's performance during the static fire. So far, the third big water tank hasn't been plumbed into the rest of the deluge system. In addition to these developments, some enhancements have taken place within the tank farm infrastructure. Specifically, on Monday, a significant stride was made with the transportation of four cutting-edge subcoolers to augment the functionality of the liquid oxygen tank farm, making eight kettle boilers in total on the liquid oxygen side of the OTF. Aside from that, Kevin Randolph from WAI has also uncovered a significant influx of new pipelines being transported to the Starbase facility. These are likely pipes prepped for the new boilers and pumps. Whilst the emplacements for additional subcoolers and pumps have always been there and planned, the upcoming shift to horizontal from vertical storage reduces the head pressure at the pump inlets, which further increases the need to have more pumps in place. After all, this strategic upgrade aims to substantially reduce the propellant loading time, minimizing it time, minimizing it from the previous 90 minutes to an estimated 45. This refinement in the propellant loading process is anticipated to contribute to the overall efficiency and agility of operations, ultimately leading to more streamlined launch procedures. Getting ready for the next Starship flight, Elon Musk tweeted recently. Hopefully, it'll come soon, but SpaceX still has a long way to go before it does. SpaceX still has multiple hurdles to clear ahead of the second test flight, including approval from the Federal Aviation Administration. There are also lawsuits currently pending against SpaceX from environmental groups, but it's unknown if those would prevent a flight. Do you think there's a chance we could see a test flight in September? In any case, while SpaceX prepares for Starship's second flight, the company is concurrently gearing up for subsequent flights involving multiple vehicles in progression at the production site. Booster 12 is almost fully stacked in the Mega Bay, with the methane tank installed this week. Ship 29 is now receiving the remaining of its TPS tiles between its sections. Ship 28 is likely to be a vessel that embodies even greater advancements compared to Ship 25. Meanwhile, well, Mega Bay 2 just also received more parts of the internal staircase. In essence, these simultaneous endeavors reflect SpaceX's commitment to not only perfecting the execution of Starship's second flight, but also establishing an infrastructure and workflow that can seamlessly accommodate multiple vehicles at various stages of production, propelling the company's ambitious goals even further. In another piece of noteworthy news, astronauts aboard a SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule docked Sunday at the International Space Station. This concludes a one-day trip to rendezvous with the orbiting laboratory after launching from Florida. SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk chimed in briefly on the successful launch, reposting a video of the docking and adding a unique piece of insight. Dragon docks with the space station, he said. Strange to think that they're both traveling at around 25 times speed of sound. Thank you so much. I have to keep reminding myself this is not just a dream. Crew 7 Commander Jasmine Mockbelly of NASA radioed to SpaceX Mission Control after the successful docking. Uh, this is the first step of the journey. Uh, the real mission begins now on board the International Space Station. We have a lot of exciting work uh, ahead of us that we look forward to. Crew 7 Pilot Andreas Magasin of the European Space Agency radioed SpaceX. 
The mission is the seventh operational commercial crew flight for NASA by SpaceX and the company's eighth for the U.S. Space Agency overall. It is SpaceX's 11th crewed mission, including three private astronaut flights in recent years. Notably, a day after launching NASA's Crew-7 mission to the ISS, SpaceX flew its Falcon 9 rocket from the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. The launch was SpaceX's 59th for 2023 and its 258th eighth overall mission, indicating that it is unlikely that the firm will meet its self-set target of launching 100 rockets this year. If the company is to launch 100 missions this year, it'll have to launch at least 10 missions per month for the remainder of 2023. Even though SpaceX might not launch 100 missions this year, the firm has grown its launch cadence this year compared to the last. In 2022, the company had launched 61 missions, and with potentially two more launches left before August closes, it appears that SpaceX will have met its 2022 cadence by the end of this month. A large portion of SpaceX's launch manifest is made of Starlink launches, and recent trends indicate that the firm will have to step up the pace of these launches as well. This is mainly due to the fact that the number of satellites that SpaceX launches with each mission has rapidly dropped since the firm finished building out the first generation portion of its constellation. The satellites part of the second generation constellation are significantly bigger than their predecessors and naturally take more space inside the Falcon 9 rocket. SpaceX's plans for its second generation constellation have included using Starship for the launches, and so far there are few signs that the rocket will be operational by the end of this year. In the end, SpaceX has done very well and in this rough patch. In other news, a tropical storm barreling towards the Florida Peninsula caused United Launch Alliance to stand down from an Atlas V launch planned for Tuesday. Meteorologists forecast tropical storm Idalia to become a major Category 3 hurricane by the time it makes landfall on Wednesday. Late Monday evening, ULA announced that it would roll the rocket back to the safety of the vertical integration facility ahead of the storm out of an abundance of caution for personnel safety, as well as for the safety of a critical national security payload. Earlier in the day, during a pre-launch press conference discussing the mission, dubbed NROL-107, or Silent Barker, ULA President and CEO Tori Bruno noted that the probability of violating weather at the planned launch time of 8.34 a.m. EDT on Tuesday, August 29th was only 20%, but that flipped to 80% of no-go weather for the backup launch opportunity. The concern will be high winds. We can take about 54 knots sitting on the pad, and so if we can't make that, then our opportunity on the range is a few days off, Bruno said. I won't give you the date yet because it's still in coordination, but we'll have to wait. If ULA had rolled the dice and made an attempt on Tuesday but had not been able to launch, there would not have been time to move the Atlas V before bad weather arrived. The Silent Barker mission will send a satellite to geostationary orbit on behalf of the National Reconnaissance Office and in partnership with the U.S. Space Systems Command, part of the U.S. Space Force. During Monday morning's press event, NRO Director Christopher Skulls described it as a watchdog to track other satellites in the GEO space. You've heard about communications satellites moving from one location to another to provide better coverage for other areas. Certainly, we want to be able to see that so we know what is going on in that area, Skulls said. But we also want to know if there is something going on that is unexpected or shouldn't be going on that could potentially represent a threat to a high-value asset, either ours or one of our allies. The secret mission is in collaboration between the Space Force and the NRO to meet space protection goals from the Department of Defense and Intelligence Community. Silent Barker is designed to detect and track objects in space while also allowing satellite operators to search for objects from Earth. And that's all, folks. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please Please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.